So Andrew, Lucinda, and I are walking around downtown Ontario in an increasingly frenzied effort to get a professionally administered COVID test. You need one to fly back to the U.S., and though we were led to believe it was going to be easy to do at any pharmacy in the city, we were finding that not to be the case. This one couldn't get us in until the next day. This one didn't administer tests on the weekends. This one's pharmacist got killed by a moose that very morning. And the whole time, the clock is ticking ever closer to the time that we've got to be at the fucking theater to set up for the show. Finally, we find a place that can get us in in half an hour, and then we've got to wait 20 minutes for the results. So we get our results. Negative. Hooray. But we're up against it time-wise. So we're practically jogging back to the hotel. And as though we were trapped in a goddamn sitcom, suddenly a parade shows up out of nowhere and blocks the route to our hotel for a dozen blocks in either direction. Now, under normal circumstances, I wouldn't just barge through the middle of a parade. I lived in New York City for almost a decade. As Jon Stewart once said, New York's is a parade-based economy. I'm used to finding my way around giant lines of obstruction. But in this instance, A, I was in a super big fucking hurry, and B, the parade was a full-on gong celebration of World Fulon Day. That's actually tomorrow, though, so I guess this was the only time that they could get permission to block the streets. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I was damned if I was going to be late to my own show out of respect for a fucking weird-ass alien cult of homophobic fascists, so we just pushed through the fucking parade. Now, of course, I'm fully expecting to unleash the floodgate. Like, generally, in situations like this, as soon as one guy does it, everybody does it. Or at least that's how it works in the good old U.S. of A. But we weren't in the U.S. of A. We were in Canada a country that, at least in my experience, lives up to its reputation for politeness. So instead of that, I just got a bunch of people giving me that I bet he's an American look. And a quick glance around, it's, it's obvious why, right? Like, I know what Falun Gong is. They don't. You know, they just see a bunch of Chinese people celebrating a holiday they've never heard of, carrying signs that say stop Chinese communism and handing out pamphlets about proper breathing techniques. They see some exotic ceremony that highlights the diversity of their city, and they relish the opportunity for cultural exposure that it provides. And then they see me as some insensitive American jackass who can't spare five minutes to respect another nation's tradition. Now, my first instinct was to fucking plead my case, right? I just wanted to scream out, it's okay to disrespect them. They're a crazy-ass cult that forbids their followers from using medicine and says that Donald Trump is a literal angel from heaven, but I can't because I'm in a hurry. So I just walk away looking like an asshole because I was the more informed party. And later on, as we're Ubering to the venue, it occurred to me how that single moment is sort of a perfect encapsulation of my entire fucking career. Hell, it's a pretty fitting metaphor for all of atheist activism. If you think about it, society tells us to be respectful of everyone's beliefs, but we know enough to see the harm in doing so. And of course, because the people selling the bullshit religions also have their hands on the cultural steering wheel. We're always left looking like assholes and wishing that we had more one-on-one -on -one time to explain ourselves. I mean, full-on gong is about as far from harmless as a religion can get. These are the motherfuckers behind the epic times. We're talking about a faith whose adherents are constantly dying of treatable illnesses out of a sense of piety. Their leader claims to be a psychic godman that can enter into his followers' minds and punish them in the afterlife for doubting him. But none of that shit was on the fucking pamphlet, of course, right? Like their public facing side is all about the importance of stillness and good posture and shit. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying that all religions are the same as this dangerous cult. Yes, they are all dangerous. They're not equally dangerous and they're not dangerous in the same way. The distinction between a cult and a religion is very important, even if we should be fighting against both. All that being said, this particular strategy is hardly unique to cults. Yeah, I remember when I was a kid, uh, the Mormons used to run these TV commercials about the importance of forgiveness and shit, right? Like, dude would spray a bicyclist with mud as he drove by, and then the bicyclist happens by him broken down up the road and helps him fix his car anyway. And that's the end. It would just say, like, you know, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Now, I, I didn't know how desperately that church needed to massage its image at that time. I was just a kid. But reflecting back on it now, the ads damn near ended saying, see, we're more than just polygamy. Uh, regular Christian stuff too. And, and for some reason, this shit works on people. Yeah, not just dumb fucking people, people who are savvy enough to see around the crumbs of philanthropy that billionaires sweep off their table now and again. People shrewd enough to divide the billion that Walmart gave to charity last year by the 572 billion it didn't. People who fully recognize that BP changing to a green logo didn't improve the fucking environment. 
Somehow these same people will hear us talking about the harm that churches do and they'll say, but what about the money they raise for the homeless? Who fucking cares? That's image enhancing bullshit at the periphery of their faith. And those same people would hear me make this point and try to argue that I'm talking about two distinct groups of people, right? The religious people that do the harm and the ones that do the good. But if the latter empowers the former, why would it even matter? Yeah, I feel like the person in charge of coordinating Walmart's charitable donations, that's probably a genuinely good person who takes a lot of pride in their work and really believes in what they're doing. But so fucking what? But, you know, even that is being too kind to religion because, like, at least Walmart actually gives away the fucking money. But the churches that preach about forgiveness and acceptance and universal love are the very same churches that ostracize LGBTQ people, demonize immigrants and otherize everybody else. Their outward focus on charity and good works is the hold message telling you that the call they're ignoring is very important to them. And for way too many people, no amount of evidence to the contrary will ever convince them otherwise.